All right, so what we're working on okay, is that we are going to look at uh, this activity that Ms. Soto put together um, about osmosis. So I set it up yesterday and took some measurements for it. But um, what it is, is we're just checking to see if all the stuff we learned about osmosis is actually true. Okay, If you recall, I told you if you put like a cell in salty water that it would shrivel up. Okay, If you put it in distilled water, it would... It would blow up, it would explode, okay, uh, things like that. So um, just wanted to show you that this is actually true. We, I ran this experiment overnight last night and it's worked perfectly, okay. What we need to do is just take a few of the before measurements. It's actually what I took yesterday. I just need you guys to write them down in the observations tables here, All right? So I'm going to kind of run through what those measurements are from the pictures that I took. And then I'll have you guys come over to the table and we'll take the after measurements. I'll take some more pictures of them as we do that, okay? And then we'll um, work on some of these analysis questions here as a bit of review of osmosis because obviously it's the most important okay of the uh, cell transport processes that we went over okay so the uh, first one okay is uh, the first observations table we're going to be filling in is the gummy bear in the salt water here okay so i've got the observations for the salt solution right here um, so the first one is mass okay so the mass before it's kind of hard to see on this picture is 2.802 grams Okay, the length of the uh, gummy bear, so I'm going to say that this dimension is the length, was 2.4 centimeters. <clears throat> okay, uh, the width, which I'm going to say um, was this dimension here, okay, was 1.3 centimeters. And the height of the gummy bear was exactly one centimeter. Okay, so that's this one here. Okay. We're kind of looking at them from the side. All right. And this is kind of what the gummy bear looked like, normal gummy bear, okay, before I put it in the salt solution. All right, uh, the one in sugar water. All right, so its mass before Okay, so that's the next table down here. The mass before was 2.817 grams. Okay, its um, length was 2.3 centimeters. Its width was 1.2, and its height, this dimension here, was 1.1. Sorry, one, yeah, 1.1 centimeters. Okay, you can see, look like a normal green gummy bear when I put it in the sugar solution. All right, then I had this uh, red one, okay, that was going in the distilled water, all right? Um, so the mass of the one going in distilled water before was 2.719 grams. Okay, the length of the distilled water gummy bear. Um, oh, I printed the wrong one. I made one that had four charts. This one only had three. So draw another one right underneath here for distilled water. Sorry, guys. I, I edited it, and then I printed the wrong version of it. OK, so one for distilled water. OK, so 2.719, just have it like a before. OK, and then the, uh, the length here was 2.3 centimeters. The width was 1.2 centimeters, and the height was one centimeter. Um, 2.3 centimeters for the length, and the width was, I think I said 1.2. All right, and you can see here, okay, red gummy bear looking normal, going into the distilled water before. Okay. And then I used the yellow gummy bear for the tap water. 
Okay, so the tap water one you do have, it's on the second page here, it's on the second side, right? So the mass of the uh, tap water gummy bear was 2.709 grams. Okay, its length was also 2.3 centimeters. Okay, its width was 1.1 centimeters and its height was one centimeter. Okay. And we can also see again, okay, gummy bear looked pretty normal right, going into the tap water. Okay. All right, so predictions here. What's the salt water gummy bear going to look like? Shriveled up, smaller, we sh what should we see? Decrease or increase in mass? Decrease, yeah, it should have lost some water out of it, okay? Uh, and then obviously some of the dimensions should have decreased as well, all right? What about for the sugar bear? Okay, I mean, sugar is a solute. It's not a salt, but it's a solute, okay? So there's a possibility there could be a change there okay? if um, if the water is going to move from, you know, from sugar or to the sugary solution, okay? We'll have to see on that one. Uh, what about the tap water? Yeah, tap water, I would hope, would expand, okay? I mean, tap water is going to probably have less dissolved stuff in it than what's inside the gummy bear, okay? The big thing with the gummy bear is what are gummy bears? What's the main ingredient in gummy bears? Yeah, yeah, high fructose corn syrup, okay, which is sugar, basically. Um, so if there's a lot of sugar already in the gummy bear, even if I put it in a sugary solution, how much is the water going to move? Not much, right? There's a lot of sugar inside the gummy bear. There's a lot of sugar outside the gummy bear. It may not have changed as much as the one that was put in salt. Okay. Uh, what about the distilled water? Yeah, it should be. It, I mean, should it expand more or less than the tap water? Yeah, I would say more. Okay, tap water's got some electrolytes in it. Okay, some dissolves the stuff in it. So um, that's what we should see. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to come over here and we'll take some measurements. So uh, just bring your sheet over. You guys can record it. I'm going to take pictures okay, and uh, we'll get some data here. Okay, so now that we've done the after stuff. Okay, so we'll have a look at what they look like after. So here's our salt solution after. Obviously, okay, the uh, mass had decreased, okay? Uh, we also saw uh, some decrease in some of the dimensions as well, okay? Uh, length, width, and height had all decreased at least somewhat. And we could tell, obviously, that the appearance of the gummy bear was significantly altered. because Some of the water had been drawn out and that's that membrane they put over it to keep it uh, keep its shape has kind of pulled away or the stuff inside is pulled away from it. That's what these bubbles are as part of that that membrane. Okay, so we can see there was definitely uh, um, some shrinking, which means that water was moving out of that gummy bear and into the solution. Okay, for the sugar solution, we actually saw an increase, which means that there was, where was there more um, water? Or where was the sugar, sorry, more concentrated? In the bear or outside the bear? In the bear. Yeah, there was more sugar inside the bear. So the water moved from the sugar solution and into the bear. Right, um, and the reason for that is well, a gummy bear is a super saturated, high fructose corn syrup solution. Okay, that uh, is going to be way higher in concentration of sugars than you could ever make a, a solution where you were dissolving sugar in water. Okay, um, so it it uh, increased because obviously water moved in, okay, and we saw that you know it was its mass had increased essentially almost double, okay? Um, and it had increased in all of the size dimensions as well. Not a lot in terms of size, but the mass was definitely bigger, all right? For the distilled water, I mean, that one had, had absorbed so much stuff that it actually broke when we tried to pull it out, which is why we had to measure it in the, uh, or, or on the scale, okay? Mass was 10.178, almost five times heavier than it was when we initially um, weighed it, okay? Um, and obviously the dimensions had also increased significantly from around two centimeters or two and a half centimeters to well over to three and a half almost, okay? Um, and all the dimensions had increased significantly. It had obviously just swelled, okay? There's nothing in the distilled water. Therefore, all the all the uh, water has to rush into the gummy bear to try and balance out the solution. If we'd have left it in there, eventually it would have just dissolved. If the membrane would have broken and then, well, which it did. And so if I leave it in there now, by Monday, it'll just be a red 
sugary solution. Okay. okay, and similar thing happened with the tap water, although at least with the tap water, the shape of the gummy bear kind of stayed. Okay, we could actually see all the details in the gummy bear here. Okay, uh, but mass had increased, okay, by almost four times. Okay, we had uh, a significant increase in size in all of the dimensions, okay, due to the fact that there was uh, way more salt and sugar inside the gummy bear than outside. Okay, so everything moved in. All right, so if we're looking at those questions, and so if we're looking at those questions, we're saying, what happened to the gummy bear after it was placed in the salt solution? Well, osmosis occurred. Okay, osmosis happened, and water moved across the membrane and in, or sorry, and uh, out of the gummy bear. Okay, uh, because the solution that the gummy bear was in was hypertonic. There was more salt outside. All right, so what we would have seen, okay, would have been, um, I'm not going to try and draw a gummy bear. That's my gummy bear. They're roughly rectangular. Okay. And so what we would have seen would have been water okay, moving out of the gummy bear okay, and into um, the salt solution that surrounded it. Okay. All right. Uh, for the gummy bear in the sugar solution, okay, um, we would have seen maybe some exit, but mostly the water would have been moving in. The, the concentrations probably for the salt solution were probably the closest to isotonic, but obviously given our data, okay, um, we know that the um, solution it was surrounded by was, sorry, not isotonic, was hypotonic, meaning there was less sugar in the surrounding water than there was in the gummy bear. And so as a result, more water moved into the gummy bear than moved out, resulting in an increase in size. Okay? Not as significant as the tap water or the, uh, or the distilled water, but still enough to see an increase in size. Okay? And then obviously for both the tap water and for the um, uh, distilled water, we were talking about an incredibly hypotonic situation. Basically no dissolved solids in the distilled water, only a small amount of dissolved solutes in the tap water. Okay? So our gummy bear okay, would have definitely had all movement in across the membrane okay, uh, due to osmosis. Okay, so osmosis occurred in all of those situations. Even if we had an isotonic solution, one that was exactly the same concentration as the gummy bear, okay, we still would have had osmosis occur. It's just that the amount coming in would have been equal to the amount going out. Okay? That happens all the time. Stuff moves across the membrane all the time, but if it's isotonic, it's balanced. Okay? It doesn't mean it stops moving. It just means that it moves in and out equally. Okay, everybody good with that? All right, so just a quick review activity there. It's kind of cool looking stuff. Okay, um, getting ready for your unit exam on Tuesday. Okay, so make sure over the weekend, okay, that you are doing some more preparation for that. Okay, go over that uh, practice exam Sunday night, okay, or Sunday afternoon or something like that. And then I would say, that scheduled help on Monday or lunch on Monday should be the time when you come in and ask some questions. So if you've gone over that stuff and there's some things you don't understand, okay, come in and ask some questions on Monday, okay, because Tuesday obviously will be too late. All right. Okay, so you got a few minutes left here. I would say use them to do some exam prep. It's not enough time for me to get into anything from unit three. All right. On Monday, I will be starting unit three. Okay, the stuff I teach you on Monday will not be on the unit exam, right? Well, on this unit exam, it'll be on the next one.